consumptive, put with consumption of TB, was told if you stayed in England, you might live six months. In Africa, you might live two years. Went to Africa, that good African climate cured him, and he lived for years, stole so much money, finagled so much money, betrayed so much people, they're still trying to count his money. If you understood that, no black man would ever accept a Rhodes Scholarship. All that is blood money. He wanted now to take over the area that the, of the second Zulu Empire, Matibele land and Shono, Mashono land. The people in what is now Zimbabwe are Shonos mixed with Zulus. Remember the 15,000 Zulus who went there, mostly without wives? They married Shona women. So there's no great decision, di di division between them. They're all relatives. But the main thing is that when Cecil Rhodes tried to take over this country, he tried to provoke a fight with Dink, with uh, Loman Gullah. Cecil Rhodes wanted to build a communication system from Cape to Cairo, a good idea for Africa's purpose, but he wanted to build it for colonial purpose. He accused one of the vassal states under the Borlong, un, under the uh, Shona people, accused them of taking wire from the rail, from the, the communication system, and asked that they be punished. When they were punished, he asked the British Empire to punish the king because he had punished the people too severely. He faked the war using British freebooters and all that salary was what they could take from the Africans. When they saw the gold bracelets on the African women, they didn't ask to give them to me. They just cut off the arms and took them. So we ain't got nothing to be kind to anybody about but ourselves. This war led to the exiling of Loman Gala. His followers followed him into exile. Finally he told them to go back and make peace with Cecil Rhodes and save their families. In the beautiful poetry that Africans talk sometime, he said, Go sweetly, go in peace. There's nothing else I can do for you. They've got another fight, for they've spoken prematurely one more time. After the Boer War, some Zulus served as wagon masters and quartermasters and supplies in the Zulu and the British Army. The British said that they would remit their taxes. Instead of remitting their taxes, the British doubled their taxes. Now this would start and provoke the last Zulu War in Natal and other places. This war was partly led by young Zulu king Bambata and an old Zulu Sigananda. When Bambata goes to Sigananda and asks for help, Sigananda is 90 years old, 95 years old now. Sigananda is the oral historian of the Zulus. He'd, he was body servant to Chaka. He was in the, in the army that guarded the grave of Nanda. He went up, when the Zulus wasn't fighting, he went up in the Congo and fought with a dissident king called Tam Tam Anna. He came back and he saw the Zulus sitting around pitting themselves and he cursed them out and said, there's no blood on your sword. The imperialists have violated your women, have taken your land. Are you sure you are Zulus or old women waiting to be buried? Then he started his own private war, then went to jail. Now he's 
back in Zululand and out of jail again. He was head of a small group called the Kubays. He's known as Sigananda of the Kubays, a Sigananda Kubay. Now, when Bambada goes to him and asks for help, based on the fact of what help Bambada's father had rendered to him, this angles the old man. He said, I help your father because he was a Zulu and I'm a Zulu. I'm not going to pay this tax. The British want to charge $75 a month for having a dog. He lacks dogs and his sons. <laughs> Ain't going to pay tax on either one of them. Ding his way, I mean, or, um, Bimbada was called a horse thief because every time he wanted a horse, he'd take a horse from the British. Every time he wanted a cow, he'd take cattle from the British. So you didn't break no horses, he ain't break no cattle here. They all belong to me. <laughs> so when he wants one, he just takes one. So the British looking for him. He now goes to Denizulu, the last son of Ketchewayo. Denizulu said, I don't want any part of this war. I've had enough of the British jails, enough of war. Then he speaks in a loud, secretive, and yet loud enough to be heard across the room. He said that while I won't know part of this war, I've had enough of fighting, enough of jails. If there's anyone in the sound of my voice who wants to help this young man, my eyes did not see his form disappear. My ears did not hear his footsteps as he departed. Standing by is the last of the great Zulu warlords and war planners, Sanjani. He goes now to help Bimbara plan that last Zulu war. And when he go back to Natal, find out what the old man has done, the old man has started the war already. He ain't waiting for the young people to get back. He started the war already. He would fight for nine months. Finally, the British, Bimbada, would go to the grave of, of Ketchewayo to ask, ask for, pay his respects, as is the custom. Any time you're making great decisions in Africa, you go to the grave of your elders or go to your elders. The British were supposed to have cut him down on the way from the grave. His wife refused to go into mourning. If the British knew enough about Zulu custom, they would have known that Bambada was not dead. His wife said his spirit will come back and lead the Zulu people. He'll escape. He had a dummy on one horse, and he was on another. And he didn't ride as a customary white horse that day. He was a strategist too. The British killed his dummy, his double cut off the head and displayed it among the Zulus and all right, this is a lesson for you, you better stop this revolt. It stopped the revolt all right, but it did not send the wife into mourning because Zulu wives after the husband died for the mourn the rest of their life. But this didn't signal the British the fact that Ben Bottle was not dead. A man named Benny's doing some work on Dennis Zulu discovered that Bimbada escaped and lived in an obscure village in South Africa until 1926. Well, he died of natural causes in old age. Now, in summation, the Zulus have played a major role in the transformation of South Africa that was the Zulus in the building of the ANC, a great Zulu in the building of the South African Communist Party. His name was Champion. And when someone asked him in the choice between the party and your people, what choice would you make? He said, I will choose my people every time. And when the party asked 
I mean, propagated the concept of separate states. The whole homeland concept is now practiced in South Africa was taken originally from a plan laid out by the South African Communist Party. They may not have known what was going to happen to it, but they designed it first, the so-called separate states for different African groups. When they asked um, Champion about separate states and in South Africa with different groups, he said, of course, all of it belonged to we Zulus, so I'll take it all. <laughs> the party ex expelled him for being nationalist. And he did not. And when the white head of the party, A.E. Bunting, went to Russia with a delegate 